Hello, hello, and welcome back to Atomic Heart. Uh, we've been informed that a bad guy is beaming information to the west, so we're gonna go and stop that. Nothing else. Nothing else of note that should be mentioned happened. There wasn't anything else super fucked up that happened. God, these guys are just a good resource farm, huh? Can really just farm resources off all this shit easily. It's not really uh, uh, any crazy pa uh, like resources, but I can. And here's Lenin, just like at the V and H in Moscow. Ow. Indeed, but this statue was erected not by simple workmen, but by robots based on a sculptor's sketches. This approach has become quite popular over the last year. Talking about, yeah, London statue. The true communist. Alright, let's just continue on. God, are you ever gonna give it a rest? What are you yelling about? Was there like a robot I didn't see? Or are you just talking about the saw guy we fought? Alright, well, I gotta go this way. Uh, looks like there's a drivable car down there, so let's just keep going forward to that. Don't want to get seen by the camera. This is great. Stop lasering me. You done spitting those things out? All right, this is gonna be uh, a bunch of collectible stuff around here now. Stop trying to fix the cameras. All right, let's carry on. All right, so we want to go this way. Yeah, and I can see a car I can drive over there. So Charles, oh, is that a safe spot? When Dr. Sechenov sends his twins somewhere on an assignment with, say, Stockhausen, He's guarded by that red monster. Makes sense. Comrade Stockhausen is incapable of independently reaching his destination within a facility swarming with hostile robots, and Sechenov would never remain unguarded. You think there are people in the Kremlin who are jealous of him and want to get rid of him? It's more likely that they just want power over Collective. If you rule the world, it's hardly surprising if people want to take your throne. Very powerful people. I'd rather have Dr. Sechenov be the General Secretary of Collective than anybody else. I hope you're right. Yeah, no, I do not trust Sechenov at all. Charles, how could that prick Petrov send intel to the West? The facility's under lockdown. As you have no doubt already observed, there is one communication channel connected to the outside world that is not subject to the emergency protocol. The secret government line. Quite right. That channel is used by Dr. Sechenov to contact the Kremlin. No one else has access to it. Yeah, no one except Granny Zena. So, what's Petrov trying to pull? I believe he is trying to dupe the Central Hub by passing himself off as Dr. Sechenov. That son of a bitch. God damn it. Charles, is there, there really go. a chance Petrov could fool the hub? It wasn't exactly programmed by morons, right? They must have put protections in place. Hacking Collective Central Hub is a very difficult task. Even with the right communication equipment, Petrov will need considerable time to do it. So where can he find that kind of equipment, other than the Science Center? Only aboard the Flying Chilame Complex. And nowhere else? <laughs> That's great. Your goose is cooked now, Petrov, you traitorous dickhead. 
Come on. Hey, Charles. What does the Sechenov Center study? Radio waves, Comrade Major. It contains equipment that will help Petrov detect you. So move with caution. Guess we better stay quiet then. Oh god. Uh-oh. There's another car right there. Let's just... Gotta be quick. I wrecked in the perfect spot. Yeah, I really like the cars in this game, though. They're a little hard to control, but I feel like that's just because I'm playing on keyboard and cars always suck when you're playing a keyboard game. Okay, just keep going. Alright, careful. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, it, like, like, I tap the button and it starts swerving me back and forth. So where am I going? Man, the map in this game is so big. Ooh, that's a nice looking statue. Wait, is this where the game began? No. Oh god. Everything's okay. Oh god. Why is there sparks around me? Oh god. Okay, let's get into let's get into a spot where we can tunnel them in on us and we're not as open. I don't think they're gonna follow me in. So if we just keep away from the doors, we should be fine. Let's get all this loot. Can I... Hang on, let me just... Ah, uh, these doors are stuck open. Looks like they have a... a limiter on their navigation, those ones. That's how I justify this game's bad AI. <laughs> See, the advantage of robot enemies is you can justify anything stupid they do with, hey, they're just robots. Alright, yep, yep, just keep looting. Did I get everything in this room? No, there's still more. Alright, still loot more over here. Okay, now let's look at this computer. I, Isaac Schlebebebe, on May 23rd, between 11.04 and 11.56 p.m. local time, independently and without authorization, used my professional position and equipment to hack into the control system of a dual-purpose satellite belonging to the United States of America. While controlling the aforementioned satellite, I altered its trajectory in order to display text of an offensive and indecent nature via its flight path as <laughs> depicted on the center screens. I will not repeat the content of the text in question. Following an inquiry, I have come to acknowledge my guilt in this matter. I affirm that I, <laughs> I am aware that political conflicts and ideological dissonance between nations can and cannot serve as a justification for such unprofessional behavior, and I sincerely regret having inconvenienced my colleagues in the US. I apologize for my actions, admit my wrongdoings, and accept disciplinary action. That's fucking hilarious. Uh, comrade blah 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 blah. Thank you for the message about your vital discovery regarding the potential radio-free transmission of a signal via the vibrational structure of the polymer. Please read the following message slowly and carefully. There is currently no need to continue exploring the possibility of transmitting signals between polymer structures. 
nor is there any need to publish any op opinions or thoughts on the matter. To put it bluntly, you are prohibited from studying, utilizing, or discussing the discovery you have made with anyone whatsoever. That being said, for your brilliant observations and passion for science, I have requested that you pr be promoted next month and transferred to my personal research team. That sounds bad. Alright, there's more loot over here. Right, I said- oh. What? Why didn't you freeze? Fuck you. Show me what you got. Fuck you. Oh god. It really is satisfying going at these guys with mostly melee attacks. Alright, come on. Yeah, just keep looting because all of this can potentially be useful stuff. Oops. What's through here? Bathroom? Hey there. Stupid rating. I hope whoever came up with it is as fortunate as I am. Yeah, me too. What are you talking about? I'm talking about social rating, Nichayev. You never had to worry about it due to your special category, but we, the common people, are quite dependent on it. Especially if we want to receive anything other than a basic thought. The advanced models come in colors like Kremlin Star Red. What do these things have to do with each other? I will tell you. Having a high social rating allows one to receive an advanced controller model with extended functions instead of a regular one, one with a vibrant color scheme. And so, I stayed to work overtime because I needed to clock in just eight extra hours to have my rating upgraded. Everything would be fine if every fifth master didn't start trying to improve their rating before the polymer treatment and cause social devaluation as the result. What? Depreciation of labor. Everybody started working harder just to get a free toy. Capitalism struck at us from a direction we never expected. Did you seriously die because you wanted a shiny trinket? What are you, a magpie? Listen, you. Are you mocking me? Just go. I'm just a statistic now anyway. Clearly. Man, poor bastard. Alright. Uh, let's keep poking around this place. Loot! Loot! Wonderful loot! What's on this computer screen? Comrades, I'd like to invite all interested persons to sign a petition. Uh, oh, hang on. Sorry, side distraction. To change the name of our scientific center back to pa uh, Popov. Everyone knows that, thanks to Comrade Senshov, our radio antennas can uh, hearken to the frig the, the, the frigid breath of outer space. But it's thanks to Comrade Popov that those antennas exist in the first place. Space is great and all, but uh, what if they, uh, there's actually nothing out there? Join me, comrades. So he wants to revert to an old name. D Comrade Pestov, congratulations on your promotion from junior research assistant to senior research assistant in the Sentrov Center's secret department. You'll be closely studying signals from outer space and trying to determine which, if any, could lead to the discovery of non-terrestrial civilizations. <laughs> There's top secret information available suggesting that we ought to keep looking. I've got high hopes for you, uh, uh, for you new assistant, or uh, your new assignment is effective immediately, so hang on. To Pestov, and this one is from Pestov, right? Yeah, that's fucking hilarious. So he's talking about how space is pointless, and so they promoted him. 
They air quotes promoted him. I found it. I found it. Listen here. Eureka, read it. It's a real message. What the fuck is that about? Uh, we did it. Take your time now. Don't rush it. What? That sounded like a microwave. You're fired. Fuck you and the horse you rode in on, Pest Stop. You've been tracking radio waves from space for three years and waiting for aliens? That was a goddamn microwave oven. Yeah. I hope you get killed by a meteorite, you fucking asshole. I've had it up to here with you. Ah, uh, that's funny, because that's a reference to a real life thing. I think I think it's a reference to a real life thing. I know there's this story about a military base that kept on at the same time every day, picking up an unusual signal on their deep space listening signals. And they're like, yo, what the fuck is this? Is this aliens? Is this a message? And they put like loads and loads of manpower and labor to try and figure out what it is and then one day the message showed up at a different time and they were like what what significance is that and that's when somebody put it together it only happened when a particular co-worker went on lunch break and it turned out their microwave was positioned in such a way that when activated it would cause the signals to be read or cause certain signals to be picked up by the uh listening devices so they've been spending thousands of dollars to listen to their own microwave. Very funny. All right. Uh, there was another. Yep, over here. Million rupee idea. <laughs> yeah, it was. It's a funny story. Listen to an amazing idea. What if we put a message in the next automated research satellite? Here's a, uh, gl here's the gist of it. We put a polymer carrier in a gilded container. The gold will protect it against destruction. Inside the container, we carve a diagram showing how to transform polymer data into an image. Then we put our return address, a pulsar chart. Uh, the position of the sun in the galaxy and the diagram of the radiation from a hydrogen atom so there's the so they get to there they can get met metrical and temporal temporal units we could also use uh, uh, we could also record music various noises photographs and sketches of, of a man and a woman I think it'd be cheap but really significant and effective based off a real life thing we did in our timeline. A fund of, uh, so, article of draft. Academy of Consequence. A fundamental distinction. We are waiting for a signal from outer space and bombarding infinite, uh, uh, infinity with powerful pulses. Like we're standing in the dark forest and shouting, anybody there? Oh, I know this analogy. Uh, even a scientist's brilliant mind that fully comprehends the vastness of space, finds it inconceivable that nowhere in the potentially infinite expanse of the universe there is anybody else endowed with intelligence. 
Uh, but what if we don't find anyone to talk to in the Stark Forest just because we don't share a common language? I'm not I'm just talking about human language, of course. Imagine what would happen if we encounter a life form that was, for example, literally unfamiliar with mathematics, and its overall paradigm had no place for similar system. How could we possibly communicate with a species like that? That brings uh, me to a question. How many times could we already have encountered something that we simply fail to acknowledge as another life form? Oh, okay, when I heard Dark Forest, I thought I was going to talk about Dark Forest Theory. Uh, a Ministry de uh, of Defense, or the Ministry of Defense has requested clarification regarding the signals from out signals from outer space. Apparently, their the fad for alien-related pranks has now gotten its claws into even the brainiest of us, thanks to Orson Welles' little escapade. I've sketched out a report for them. I'd like you to draw up a uh, to draw to draw it up in those simple, gloomy terms military men appreciate and send it over to them. We currently have five working theories regarding the repeating signals from space. Neutron star. When the star goes nova and dies, it can transform into a quickly re revolving neutron star. We believe that neutron stars with a strong magnetic field could emit similar strange signals. A merging of two stars. Another potential explanation is the collision of two neutron stars. Most radio bursts detected by the telescope over the last decade have been singular. Uh, Blitzar. A quickly revolving neutron star that cannot bear its own weight, so it collapses very quickly and transforms into a black hole. A black hole. There's a theory that radio bursts can be emitted by neutron stars falling into a black hole, or that the black hole itself could emit them as it quickly shrinks, or dark matter could do the same as it collides with the black hole. Human error. An imperfect, imper the imperfections inherent in available equipment, even Soviet equipment, human error when calculating data, Either of these could lead to inaccurate interpretations, and it, we already know it was a microwave. All right. Petrov is somewhere nearby, Comrade Major. Keep it down. Hang on, how do I get in that room? Oh, hang on, there's a whole bunch over here. Oh, this is just, it's not a whole bunch, it's just a little bit more space. Alright, let's hack this door in case I ever need to use it. Hey there, handsome. Soon be so many oh shit! Here that your demise is inevitable. Not if I run and hide. I didn't realize there was a camera right there. Yeah, I actually think I ran away in time. That was ice, not coom. I was freezing them. See, this is ice, and this is coom. And that is icy coom. All right, well, let's just hide in this corner and hope nothing finds us and wrap up this episode. So, I hope you've all been enjoying this episode of Atomic Heart. Uh, and next time we'll be making our way to whatever's through that other locked door. Hope you've all been enjoying this episode, and cards will be appearing in a moment. Love y'all very, very much. And, uh, oh yeah. If you, if you enjoy this series, you might also enjoy, hang on, let me double check my notes to make sure. Uh... My, my note-taking thing automatically went into lock, lockdown. Yeah, you might enjoy my, uh... Oh god, I'm a professional! Okay, yeah. You might also enjoy my Bioshock series that I'm playing through, which I believe at this point in time we've begun the Minerva's Den DLC. So yeah! 
Go check that out. It should be being linked in the end cards. Click that to continue watching. Love y'all very, very much, and ta-ta for now.